Boy be the guy who comes second to none Who love the world so much that he gave us his son Ain't he good? Ain't he good? Ain't he good? All the time Be the light, be the light hey. Righteousness, Lord Hallelujah, you are mighty. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for this is the day that you have made. We will continuously rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we magnify you, we praise you, we worship you in spirit and in truth. For you are our God and we are your children. And we thank you for the hedge of protection that you always place around about us as we go to and fro. We thank you for your angels that you've encamped around us, Lord God, as we go, Lord God. And as we come, Lord, we know we are protected. We know that you always bless, protect, watch over us and strengthen us, Lord. We thank you for your peace, God. Your peace that surpasses all understanding. And this day and forevermore, we thank you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen and thank God. I want to welcome you to Top of the Mountain Christian Ministries here in Blackwood. Welcome, welcome all to, to Top of the Mountain Christian Ministries. We, we thank God that you took some time out to fellowship with us and be a part of what God is doing in this season. We glorify his holy name. We glorify his holy name. We thank him for you. We thank him for the sunshine and we thank him for the rain. So what now what, you know, what's, what's customary here, we take out our cell phones so we can go ahead and text somebody, let them know that we're in agreement in prayer with them right now. Amen. That we're, we're standing in agreement with them right now in prayer. Give you a few moments to go ahead and text them and let them know that that we're praying with them and for them today. At Top of the Mountain Christian Ministries in sunny Blythewood, South Carolina. We thank you. Amen. We've um, had a busy week. We just got back on last night from New Jersey where we had an fe- awesome time with Fellowship of the Pastors and the Pastors Gathering. If you wasn't there, you missed a glorious time in, in the Lord. Dr. James Brown, James Brown of Wilmington, North Carolina, brought a powerful word Amen. to challenge pastors and to, to, to get pastors to think and get them to move in the right direction and do the things that God has ordained pastors to do. Hey amen, hey amen. And if you wanted to be a part of that next year, we will be in Wilmington, North Carolina at Gethsemane Baptist Church. Dr. James Brown is the presiding pastor there. We haven't decided the day exactly, but it will be in October. So pastors, we want you to come out and join us in the past, the gathering of the pastors for fellowship and to rebuild you. And it, it gets a charge to you and get you prepared to minister to the house that God has put you as under shepherd in. Charge me up. Amen. Charge me up. Charge me up. Ready to go. On fire. Lord, as we reach out to those that's on the text line, as well as those that's in here in the sanctuary, Father God. We touch and agree that you are the one that's going to bless them. You are the one that's going to do the things that you said you're going to do in their lives, Lord. Father God, all we're doing is petitioning and standing in agreement with what they're requesting, Father God. That you show yourself real to those, Father God. That you touch them, heal them where they need to be healed, Lord God. Give them an awakening of your spirit, Father God. Let them know that you are the only real and true God. That you're there for them. That you're there to heal them. That you're there to comfort them. That you're, that you're, that you're Abba Father to them, Lord. So, Father God, as we stand in agreement here on top of the mountain, Christian ministry with those that, that we sent the message out, Father God, we praying for a quick work, Father God. In your son, Jesus Christ's name. We continue to pray, we continue to move, we continue to be and flow in you as you are in us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. amen. I just want to talk a little bit about the good time we also had in um, Violent, New Jersey. God is funny. So he had us at the end of Friday's night, uh, Thursday's night, meet and greet gentlemen the gentlemen a few of us gathered outside and we start praying over the area because how you know you got some unruly people 
that just don't care what takes place. They don't even care about God's house. So on, this was on, it had to be Friday night, wasn't it? Did we go there Friday night? Yeah, it had to be Friday night that this took place because Thursday night, it remind, Thursday night was the meet and greet. And we walked out after the service and we got outside and all you smell in the area is marijuana. So I'm saying, God, what's going on? He said, take dominion. Take authority over the area. So on Friday, we come back, and after the service, we gathered out, and we start praying. We start praying over the area, and we're taking dominion, and we're reclaiming the land, and we're putting God's presence back into the land. So as we finished, God told me, go knock on the door of the house that, that, that is not quite right. So I went over and knocked on the door and I said, listen, God told me to tell you that it's going to be some changes in this area, that that his his presence is going to rule and the things that's not ungodly, that's ungodly has to go. And the gentleman said, I, we don't do nothing. We just sit in the house. I said, listen, I ain't saying that you do anything. But what I'm telling you is God said that there's going to be some changes in this area. And I'm telling you that because I need to let you know that if you stay faithful. If you stay true, there's going to be some changes that's going to take place in your life. And God is going to do some things in your life that you have never seen before. Most of you have been crying out to see these things. Most of you are are, are crying out to say, God, when me, when me, when is it my turn? When is when is it my turn? When is when when am I going to be the one to get what they get to, to see you? Moving my life like I see you moving their life. When is it my turn? Amen, God is telling you now that the changes is going to come. But you got to stay faithful, church. You got to stay faithful, ladies and gentlemen. You got to stay true to what God is doing. If you don't do these things, you won't see it. It, it reminds me when I when I think of this and what just hit me is when you go to a funeral and everybody makes us that makes statements said that if they lost a loved one, I'm going to see you again. Well, I'm here to tell you that if you don't stay faithful, if you don't stay true, you won't see them again. And that's a guarantee. If you don't live your life faithful, if you don't live your life true, if you don't do the things that God has ordained you to do with the qualifications that he set out for you, you're not going to see them. And now you're not going to see the things that, that you're asked to see now. If you don't stay faithful, if you don't stay true, you have to stay faithful. You have to stay true. To receive the things that God's, God wants you to receive. He wants you to receive. He wants me to receive. God said, I will withhold no good thing from you, from those that serve me. See, God has made a promise to us. If we do the things that he's ordained us to do, we're going to see everything that he's promised us. We're going to receive the crown of glory. We're going to see receive the crown of life. We're going to receive every little thing that God has in store for us. But you got to stay faithful, church. You got to stay true, church. And, that, and that's still along the lines of back to the basics. All right, now. And we're still, we're still in it. Stay true, church. Part six. Part six. I, I tell you what, this is a series that can continue to go on and on and on. Because I don't think that people are getting what God is saying to them. So God is saying, I have to send messages. I got to send a messenger to continue to repeat the things that I've already placed in your spirit. The things that I've placed in your spirit to hear. God says that that I have to release these things so that you can hear it and receive it. People say, well, I'm not allowed to continue to do a repetitious prayer. Why has God continued to talk to me in that same manner? Because God said, you haven't got it. God said, you need to hear it over and over and over again because undoubtedly you're not listening. This is why we don't have people in the church. This is why we, this is why we don't have people that's living right. This is why we have people that goes back and forth, back and forth, because you're not listening to what God says. And he gave this to me. 
while I was up here preparing. He said, understand that one may be rich in the spirit, but poor in the world's eye. What are you saying? You, your spirit can be filled with everything that God has for you to have. But in the eyes of the world, you have nothing. But let me tell you, in the eyes of the world, doesn't matter to you if you're doing what God has ordained you to do. See, God says, even after that, he says, but be faithful and receive the crown of life. So God is saying, if you stay faithful, if you stay true, no matter what circumstances come up against you, if you do this, you're going to receive the crown of life. But you got to stay faithful, church. You got to stay true. You got to understand who he is. See, watch this. Pastor Wendy, the wise believers takes time to listen. This is the key. With their spiritual hearing. See, and see, that's the problem with most of us. We don't want to sit down and take the time to hear with our spirit. <laughs> we want to, we want to say, tell God what we want. We want to tell God what we need. And then all of a sudden, we, we, we're up and out of there. We don't sit there and receive the spiritual direction that he, that he, we need to hear. God is talking to your spirit. He's not talking to your flesh right now. Your spirit needs to be awakening. Your spirit needs to get the download of the directions that God is sending you to. And not only you, but he's sending us to. We got to do this thing, church. We got to be ready. What is the spirit saying to the ministry? Everybody's not here. So we're missing some of the vital voices that God has intended for us to have. Because everybody want to be Burger King. They want to have it their way. They don't want to be here to, to take time out of their day to serve God. But watch this. They enjoying all the fruit of his labor. They enjoying everything that he gave them. I'm not telling you that God is going to take it, take it back from you because he's not an Indian giver. But what will happen is it will dry up. The way that you were receiving God's blessings before, God is not always going to give to you because you're not doing what you're supposed to do. You're not ordained. I mean, you're not doing what you're ordained to do. God is not going to continue to give to you when you don't give back to him. And... We got to understand that God, God loves us. And we continue to say this. Pastor Wendy said it last week or the week before last when she preached. And we said, and I said it already. We all, we understand that we know the God of the blessings, but we don't understand the God of wrath. We don't understand that side of God. We don't want to see that side. And I don't want you to see that side. But what I need for you to do is hear what he's saying. If you got an ear to hear, let your spirit hear what the church is, what the messenger is saying to the church. Even though that you're rich in spirit. Maybe rich in spirit. If your spirit is full, if your spirit is filled, you're going to be rich. But if you're not feeding that spirit, you're not going to receive the crown of glory. You're not going to receive the crown of life. You're going to miss out on so much. I'm challenging you, church. I'm challenging and then the men and women of God to start adhering to the things of God. Start doing the things of God. If you have an ear, let them hear what the messenger says to the church. I love you, and I want to see everybody get everything that God has in store for. And I know God has placed a lot in this ministry. And I want you to receive the words that he's placed in this ministry for you and I, not just me, for all of us. The word, the word to hear is needed in the church today, just like it was in the first century. They needed to hear the word. They needed to hear the, a challenging word to their spirit. The Holy Spirit is telling you, follow the voice, follow my voice. And then you won't need to fear, watch this, 
you won't need to fear the difficult, to, difficult times that you come up against if you follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. And you won't have to worry about the deception that tries to creep up on you if you follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. But you can't hear the Holy Spirit if you don't have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. It's all about the relationship. It's about communication. It's about listening to what he has to say. You can't direct the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has come to direct you and I. Let's go to Revelations 2 2, 2 and uh, 8. Prayerfully, the Lord releases on this part, and we can move on to the other churches after this. But some some reason, we're knuckleheads, and we're hard of hearing, and we want to stay in captivity like Smyrna. We, we want to continue to, to flow in their problems like Smyrna. They were rich, but watch this. They were in the midst. The, the, the town of Smyrna was rich. They had It was booming. It, was, it had it going on. But the church was suffering. The church was suffering. And just like we see it today, the, the things around us are rich and things are around us are going on. But the people are suffering because the people don't have the ear to hear what says the Lord for, to the Spirit. We have to receive the spiritual guidance that God has given us. We got to listen. <laughs> What was that, that little man said? Listen, Linda, listen, Linda, listen. Church, listen, 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 listen. Pay attention to what's going on. Pay attention to what's taking place. But not only are, are, are the, the world around us, but you have deceitfulness inside of the church. If your spirit is not listening, if your spirit is not in tune, you're going to miss it. You're, somebody's going to come give you the wrong word. Somebody's going to give you the wrong direction if you're not paying attention to what God is telling you. If you can't hear, you're not going to receive it. You will not. And I'm reading from the NIV today. Verse number 8 says, To the angel of the church in Smyrna, he writes, These are the words of him who is the first and the last. Who died and came to life again. And what I'm about to read to you now, the next verse, is, is, is some evil part of what's taking place. And it says, listen, I know your, what do I know? I know your afflictions. So in other words, I know your pain. I know your suffering. I know your hurts. I know what you're going through. I know all this already. God is saying, the word of God is telling us, I know all this. I know it. I see it. And, and sometimes I allow it to happen. See, one thing about men and women of God, you don't understand that God lets some things happen to you because he trusts you. He trusts the things that we go through. He trusts that you can go through the trials. He trusts that you can go through hard times. He believes that you're powerful, and he believes that the word is in you so that you are an overcomer. God believes it. This is why he allows some things to happen. So nobody want to hear that. You don't want to hear, but it's the truth. Sometimes the hard times come, and guess what your reward is? Harder times. And the, the harder times is because God trusts you, Donnie. He trusts you. DJ, he trusts you, man. He said, I allow this to happen because I know that you are an overcomer. I know that you're going to defeat it. I know that you're going to be able to walk through this. See, it's funny. God can't trust a lot of people with trials. That's how I don't want to hear that. But it's reality. He can't trust everybody to go through for him. See, and that's the thing. When you look at it, you're not going through it just because you're going through it. You're going through it because God allowed it for you to show how real he is in your life. If you trust him. He want, he want to see how real you trust him. He want to see it. He said, I know. I know you, brother DJ. I know that you can do this. 
So I'll allow some mishaps to happen in your life because it's not going to phase you. And watch this. You're going to get the glory out of it and show me real in your life so the next person that watches you can overcome. So your pain, your suffering is for somebody else that's not as strong as you. This is why he allows some of it to happen to some people. Because he trusts the strength that you have in him. He says, I know your afflictions and I know your poverty. You are, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. So God is saying that anybody tries to afflict you or oppress you, that tries to put their way to you, they're, they're not of him. They're not his. They're part of the synagogue of Satan. And I told you on last week what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the Ku Klux Klan. I'm talking about the Proud Boys. I'm talking about the Israelites. If they're not coming with the leading of the direction of God, if they try to oppress you and try to make you go against God's word, if they try to isolate you, God said, no. They are part of the synagogue of Satan. They're not mine. And See, one of the parts that you got to understand, Satan likes to separate people. He likes to get a click here, a click there, a click there. He wants to separate you because he can't do it. Hey, if, if you are in the midst of the body of believers, you got to understand in the book of Revelation, it says, John, John said, I look to heaven. And John said, when I look to heaven, I seen every tribe. Every kindred, every nation represented in, in heaven. So if you got a problem getting along with the with your your white the white man, if you got a problem getting along with the red man, if you got a tr problem with getting along with the brown man, you are not part of God's kingdom. And we can't make excuses for it no more. We can't separate ourselves. See, and, and when I say, and I, I know some people that's going to disagree with me. I know some people don't want to listen to me right now because of what I'm about to say. When we talk about my people, can I tell you who my people is? Anybody that believes God's word. Amen. Anybody that follows God. That's my people. Not just because you got the same skin color as me. A lot of people that got the same skin color to me is not my people. Those that the, the desire to follow this word. Not pick pieces and parts of this word to follow, but follow the word. I'm not picking pieces of this word to help you. I'm not scripture twisting. I'm giving you the whole word. I'm giving you everything that God has ordained you to have because you, men and women of God, are my people. Amen. Not because you look like me. Look, Not because you have the same color skin as I have. And I've always told this church, if everybody in this ministry looks like me, have the same skin color as me, and don't have nothing different, this church has failed. I failed God. And I'm not, I've told you already, I'm a sore loser. I'm not here to lose nothing. Amen. God just changed the way that I, that I operate in losing now. I don't tor turn the tables over more like, like when me and Pastor Wendy would play a board game and she would start beating me. I turn it over because I ain't want to lose. See, I don't do it that way no more. I just, I don't want to lose to Satan. Amen. And I don't want you to lose. We're winners, ladies and gentlemen, because we serve God. Let's go back to this word. Verse 30. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. See, let me, let me stop right there. God told us right there, don't be afraid. But listen to what he said. I'm still in, um, I'm sorry, not verse 30, I'm verse uh, 10. He said, don't be afraid. God said, you're about to go through something. He said, I'm letting you know in ahead of time that you're about to go through something. 
But he said, do not be afraid. <laughs> so don't think that you're going to go through this, this life and don't go through something. Because he, he's warned us right here. You're about to go through something, but don't be afraid. Amen. And watch how he continues. He goes on and he says, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. See, I, I, I know I can't get no shout. I know I can't get you to, 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 to just understand that. Because I never told you what 10 days. I told you, but you might have forgot what the 10 days is. See, if you, if you remember what the 10 days is, on that part you would have jumped. So what God is saying is, yeah, you're going to go through something. You're going to have some trials. You're going to have some persecution. But watch. He said, it's not going to last forever. Ten times, I mean, ten days in this, in this text in this scripture reading that we have, it means a short time. You can handle anything for a short time if you follow the directions of God, if you have the leading of God with you. You can go through things because you got the, you got the rest of assurance that God says you're only going to do it for a short time. See, God said, you're going to go through something. You're going to go through some persecution. But get, let me put a guarantee to you. It's only for a short time. So when we look at it in, in, in this context of the scripture, if I'm going through something, God says, yeah, you're going to go through it, but it's going to, going to be a short time. This too shall pass. See, this is what the problem is. I need some, this shall too pass, this shall pass. This too shall pass, believers. <laughs> There go that, that person trying to be a school teacher on the front row. This too shall have faith. This too shall pass faith. <laughs> I need some of you. If you get that into your spirit, that, that what you come up against, hey, this too shall pass. You'll be able to operate a little different. You got this too shall pass faith. And your faith is saying that, hey, Trouble may come, but it ain't going to last always. You get that into your faith, you're going to be able to operate in a different manner, ladies and gentlemen. You, you're going to be able to stand taller, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to be able to walk through. You see, I, I guess that's what David was talking about. He said, yeah, until I walk through the valley of the shallow of the depth, I will fear no evil. Because he understood that this too shall pass. He's, I'm walking through that valley. I'm going through it. But I shall not fear. Because he, what did he go on? He said, John Roger style comforts me. He said, I'm walking through this trouble. I'm walking through the persecution. But God, he said, the, the God's rod and staff shall comfort me. So what he's saying is God's hands shall keep me. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, this too shall pass. You got to get this, this kind of faith. This too shall pass, no matter what I go through. If I could sit down and tell you what I go through on a daily basis, <laughs> but I, I got that this too shall pass kind of faith. <laughs> she was like, Pastor, how you do it? This too shall pass. And I'm, a, I'm open book. Y'all know I, I struggle with vertical. I, I struggle with this thing. It, it doesn't have me, but it, 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 watch this. The persecution should come at, as verse 10 said. But you know, like I say, this too shall pass. Y'all should, if y'all understood the fight sometimes that it takes for me to stand before you and minister God's word, I, I can do it because this too shall pass. The smile sometimes just to stay on my face, to, to, hey, just to talk to some people. Because you don't want to hear when you go through some of those attacks, you don't want to hear nothing because everything is magnified. And it takes a struggle to stand on your feet. But if you have this too shall pass faith, 
You get through it. You know, trouble may come, but it shall not last always. See, you got to be able to be a warrior for God. It's, he told us in the scripture that you're going to have the persecution. You're going to have trials. You're going to have things that come up against your body. But you got to be a warrior. This is strengthening you. And I kind of understood it because on Thursday night, a friend of mine, we were, we were talking, a pastor friend, and he's going through this. And he just said, how you do it? How do you do it? Well, if it wasn't for God that's on my side, I don't know. I wouldn't know. But it, this is going back to the basics of understanding who God is in your life. Trusting and believing God to make sure that everything that he says is, is yours. That's my fight. That's, that's what I do. That's showing you, church, that you got a pastor that loves God and, and believes the word that God says. I don't care what I go through. I'm standing on the word. I'm standing on his promises. I got that this too shall pass faith. Do, do you have it? Our audience, do you have this too shall pass faith? You got to get it. Stop, stop crying over that this is happening to me. This is Just walk in the belief and understanding what God is doing for you. When you can do that. God said, I can do so much more for you. We can't look at our problems as our problems. <laughs> can I look say that again? We can't look to our problems as our problem. Right, right. Yeah, write that down. That's, that's a good one. We got to look and understand that God has so promised some other stuff to us. And I've told you the crown of, the crown of life, the crown of glory. All this is God has promised to us. You got to know, you got to understand that all is well with you. No matter what you go through, all is well with you. You know, one of the things that I think, thank you, Spirit. One of the things that I think about right now, as I just said that, you know how we wake up and understand that, thank God for that I'm alive another day. You know, we say that. Do we really understand what we're saying? If you live that set aside life, and I'm not just 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 a thought that goes through Pastor Campbell's head, ladies and gentlemen. This is I'm, I'm just giving you my thought right now. That's my, my this is my clarification of that. This is my thought. This is some of the things I talk to God about in my head. So I'm like, God, we say that, but is it always good to say that? Because if I understand what my Bible says, to be absent. From the body, it means to be present with the Lord. That means, Lord, that means I, I won't have to go to vertical no more. I won't have to uh, worry about a knee replacement no more. I won't have to do all this. I'm with the Lord. I'm full. I'm whole now. I'm not saying that you go ahead and say this so that you can die now, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just telling you some of my conversations with God. So sometimes, you know, when we talk, and I know my son don't like hearing this kind of conversation, like morbid talk, but it's just, I'm real with it. And I just ask God sometimes, is, 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 thank God I'm alive again. Is that the ultimate? And once again, I'm just me. Mm -hmm. to just conversating to, to understand what God is doing. You know, he tells me sometimes, for some people, it's good to stay here. For others, it's better for them to come with me. Do you understand what I'm saying? So don't be afraid to have these conversations with God. Let your spirit talk to him. And he reveals some things to you. He'll, he'll give you the reality of life. So that you can have a better understanding what his purpose is for you. Oh, that's good. She said, you'll be at peace. You'll be able to take so many things so much, so differently when you have that perfect peace of God that he gives you. Here's another thing. With all the things that you go through, you got to learn how to respond with patience. All the stuff that, that, that 
when you're in discomfort, if you learn how to respond with patience. See, and this is what, 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 what I'm talking about. The Bible tells us in, in Revelations 2 and 10. Don't be afraid of nothing that you are about to go through. It tells, don't be afraid of it. See, what happened is, Pastor Wendy, it, we don't understand verse 10 because we, we missed what he tells us that empowered us in verse 9. See, uh, if we, if, let's go back. Let's look at what he tells, tells us in verse 10 again. Verse 10 says again, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death. And I will give you life as your victor's crown. But see, we can't do this because we missed what he said. We missed the understanding what he told us in verse 9. Let's go jump back up to verse 9. In verse 9 he says, I know your affliction and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know about the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. See, what, what we missed there is God said, I empowered you when he told us that he knows our suffering. I know your persecution. I know the slander. Let me ask you a question. You can raise your hand. When you tell people that you're a Christian, do you get a different look? When people, especially when you know that they're not, they're not Christians too. Do they look at you a little different? Do you, do you understand that, that they, they're, they're judging you on the words that came out of your mouth? They're judging you to the point of who you say that you are. And as soon, listen to me, I don't want you to miss this. As soon as you do something that they don't think, ah, you hear me, that they don't think is Christ-like, they start slandering you. You don't loan them no money. They start slandering. Look, 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 look at that. that. That person saying that they, that they are Christian. They, 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 they talking about they're Christ-like. Yeah, see, they start slandering you when you don't agree with what they want. And, and, and you know, there's something interesting about that, too. Mm-hmm. Out of all these years, I heard about they. Did anybody ever meet they? Never met they. Anybody ever meet they? You ever meet they, Donnie? He, he, Pastor, well, you never met they? Who is they anyway? They say it. But you know, my father, which are in heaven, <laughs> he said, and he has a name because he is real. Amen. <laughs> said that you shall have ever life, ever, ever forever life, ever life, everlasting life. Thank you. Tongue tied here this morning. Everlasting life. Can they give you that? I don't care what they say. Because the word just says that if you stay faithful, if you stay true, church, I will be you, be the one to give you the crown of life. He said, I will be the one. So uh, tell me, are you being slandered? Yes. But guess what about being slandered? I don't care. I don't care. Because you don't go to sleep with me, you don't wake up with me. And most definitely, you, they, don't have a heaven or hell to send me to. So that shouldn't matter to you. I'm going to borrow a few minutes. <laughs> I'm going to borrow a few minutes. You looking at your watches make me want to go a little. I ain't say who was looking at your watch. <laughs> don't, get all, don't get your hair all twisted. <laughs> Amen. But let them talk about you. 
Let them see what they got to say. But I know some for some of you, you say, come on, Jesus. If you're going to write me a letter, if you're going to write me a love letter, give me something better than what you just gave me now. You're telling me that I'm going to be persecuted. I'm going to be, Jesus, I need something better than that. I hear you. But Jesus said, I need to, to clarify some things for you before, before I give you something better than that. We got to understand what he's saying and what he's doing. Do you know the sum of his word, Pastor Wendy? Do you know the sum of his word, DJ? Do, we, do we, any of us in here know the sum of his word? Can we get the sum of his word through? He's the sum of his word in, in this, this text. is saying that you're going to have some ups and that you're going to have some downs. You're going to have some ups and you're going to have some downs. But how do you handle it? How do you handle it in the midst of it? And I'm going to tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, and you don't want to hear it, but I got to tell you, sometimes it's going to get worse before it get better. Because I ain't here to tell you what you want to hear. I'm here to tell you what we need to hear. What, what the word is telling us. That's who sent me here to give us this word. He's given us a word that we need to hear. He's given us a warning that we need to adhere to. I can't give you any propaganda. I was in Korea. And I was on the DMZ for, for a whole month. And for a whole month, we sat right outside of what's called Propaganda Village. And all you were here at night... <laughs> It is it, them trying to get us to leave our posts and come over to their side to join them. And they had this little cardboard village set up and it made it look like it was so real. They wanted you to come. They said, the, your, your American soldiers, your leaders don't like you. They don't love you like we love you. And they will blast this stuff. And, and don't, let, don't, don't let one of your letters blow away. And they get, get that letter and they start reading some of the stuff over it. See, this is what the enemy does to you. When you get out of character, when you, when you move away from the things that God has placed inside of you, when you don't work and operate like God wants you to do, he starts selling you propaganda now. He tries to set you up for failure. Because there are some moments... That God tells us there's some moments in our life that everything is not going to be all right. <clears throat> and that's part of our strengthening. That's part of, of building our character to let us know that we can go through this. But see, if I was one of those kind of pastors that would tell you that, hey, just pay more tithe. It, it, it's going to be better. Give more money. It's going to be better. You see, and then I, if, if I was, if I could tell you, if I was one of those pastors and tell you to, to bring your giving envelope up there and, and just lay it on the altar and I lay across it and, and God is going to increase you from that. If I was one of those. But I can't be one of those because that's propaganda again. I got to be one to tell you that sometimes the struggle is real. Sometimes that you're going to go through something. But if you went back to the basics and returned to your first love and understand how God operates inside of us, when we go through those times, we win. They're going to come, but we're going to win. You see, you see, child of God, I'm here to tell you like Jesus told them in Smyrna. And today that there are some seasons that are going to get worse before they get better. And I, I look out amongst us. I, I look out and see a lot of empty seats and, and, and understand that it, it, this too shall pass. 
This is one of those seasons that's, that's, that's worse before it gets better. God is saying, where is your faith? Where does your faith lie? Uh, are you still going to follow me when, when you don't have a packed house? When, when the giving is not to the standard that you want to see? Are you going to trust me? Or are you going to give in to the propaganda and say, go ahead and shut the door? Are you going to trust me, men and women of God? Or are you going to do the things that I've ordained to, to do? See, see, what we got to understand, sometimes God has to take us down before he can bring us up. We got to go through the downward motion to, to be able to get back up. See, he has to get us to when we get down, what, what do we have? We start tr trusting and believing God then. And then we trust him to get us back up. And see, this, see, what happens is we don't have to continue to go through this over and over again. But what happens to some of us, God took us down. He brought us up and then we forgot about him. So what he takes us down so we can always know that he's there and that he's real. He don't want you to, you to forget about him. Trust God. Believe God. See, sometimes your true test of your maturity in God is not how you handle the trending up. How do you handle the trending down? Right. How do you handle that? Can you handle, can you handle it when, when things are not going so well? Mm -hmm. And see, this is what happens on that trending down. How did you treat the people when you passed them? When you were going up? Mm -hmm. Now you're going down. How are you treating them as they go up, as they pass you? How do you trend down? You trend up very well, but how do you trend down? Can you handle that? What happens, men and women of God, when things get worse? What happens when it's not to your liking? See, in this text we just read, Jesus gives us three things. Number one, he gives us suffering. Number two, he gives us imprisonment. And number three, he gives us trials. Why, why, why do I got to go through it? Why, why, why is this so, Pastor? What, what, what is the purpose? Can you stay true? Can you stay faithful, church? See, what, what's taking place is... Can, can how you handle it please God? Can you, can you please God in handling everything you've been going through so far? And, and watch this. Watch this. Here's your prize for going through all, all of that trials. Here's your prize. He's going to give you more trials. He's going to give you more suffering. That's your prize after coming out of this trial, after, after coming out of that suffering. God says, here's your prize. I'm going to give you more of what you've just been going through. I know you don't want to hear stuff like that. But th this is where God says that I know that you're true. I know that you're faithful. I know that you can trust me when you handle this the right way. I know this is not the truth that you wanted to hear today, but this is part of the truth, uh, understanding of how, that you are a man and woman of God. And watch this. The truth of it all is because you can handle or manage something for the first time allows God to give you more in verse 10. Because you managed what took place in verse 9. God said, I can give you more in verse 10. Did you, do you understand that? Let's look at verse 10 one more time. Verse 10 says again, it says, 
Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you and you will suffer persecution. So because you can handle it in verse 9, God, God said, I'm going to give you a little bit more in verse 10. He said, the devil is about to throw you into prison to test you and you will suffer 10 days. And, and watch this. This this is what I like. Jesus said, he tells us in the scripture, he said, some of their plans that they have against you is going to be successful. Did you, did you not read that? See, I'm trying to, to prepare you to be more than an overcomer. I'm trying to prepare you to be that believer and this too shall pass. This, you see, you can't, you can't get strengthened by me telling you that money cometh all the time. You can't be strengthened and tell me that when you leave here that you're going to get a brand new house, a brand new car. But when the trials come and you don't get all that, I'm telling you how to handle that. I'm telling you how to become a mature Christian. So he tells us that we're going to go through this, but we're going to be strong. He says, go through it until it's end. And to watch, Jesus tells in Luke 22 and 31, he says, and the Lord says to Simon, Simon, indeed Satan has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Do you understand what just took place there in this scripture? Anybody, can anybody tell me what just took place in Luke 22 and 31? He, Satan went to God and said, can I do something to Simon? Can I, can I do this? And, and God said, yeah, go ahead. And God said, I I'm letting Simon know that you're coming. I'm preparing him to be able to meet this challenge. I am encouraging him with my word. And see, that's what God has sent me here today, to encourage us to be able to handle this thing. To be able to continue to move forward. And then it goes on and says, but what? In verse 32. Watch, watch Jesus' response to what took place here. This, this is what I really need you to get into your spirit. In, in Luke 20, uh, 22 and 32, it says, But I have prayed for you that your faith should not fail. That your faith should not fail so that you can strengthen your brother. See, that's what you don't want to hear. That's what you don't understand. It, the word in 31 says that Satan is coming to sift us as wheat. But Jesus didn't say what you thought he was going to say. Jesus said, I pray that your faith doesn't fail. See, we want Jesus to say, I'm coming to get you. But Jesus said, I'm coming. I'm praying for you. <laughs> I'm praying for you. That you shall be strengthened. And then here's the kicker. Not only am I praying for you to be strengthened, but when I pray for you, you turn back and get your brother. I'm strengthening you so that you can get your brother. I'm strengthening you for this attack for your brother. I'm not strengthening, this, strengthening you for you. Y'all didn't want to hear that. But see, we miss that when we read this scripture. That Jesus said, I pray for you. And Jesus didn't say, I come to get you. I'm praying for you. See, yeah, that's what we got to understand, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> yeah, that, that opened some eyes right there, didn't it, Pastor Wendy? <laughs> see, we got to understand this word. This is what's going to keep us, ladies and gentlemen, this word. He said, but I have prayed for you. 
See, you know the first thing we do as men and women, why me? Why me? Why do I got to go through it? Jesus, come get me. Jesus said, no, I'll pray for you. He said, I'll pray for you that your faith should not fail. <laughs> See, he, what he's saying is, don't give up in the fight. Don't give up in the battle. Continue to move forward in this thing. Continue to fight. Not only continue to fight, that your faith should not fail so that you can go strengthen your brother. I know that's not what you wanted to hear. I know that ain't hitting right. It's tight, but it's right. And we got to go through this thing for, for we can get out of this battle so we can understand that everything that we go through We're going to win if we faint not. Man, I thought I was going to get finished this today. This word got good. And God says that we got another part that, that I'm going to finish. I, I quit. I, I don't know when I'm going to finish, ladies and gentlemen. Whenever God says it's done. But what I'm here to do is encourage you. Amen. I'm here to give you the truth. See, the one thing that how you fight power is with truth. It's not how, how you go through it. It's the, the truth that you go through it with. And see, let me tell you something. If you don't fight the power with truth, if you don't say nothing, if you isolate yourself, you just much as part of the problem. So we got to learn how to say something. What the word say? Open your mouth and say something. And what I'm telling you is, is when you feed your spirit, when you when your spirit has the understanding, it has listened to God, he's going to give you the right words to speak. And I'm not just telling you just to say something, just to say something. I'm telling you to say something that God has placed inside of you. It hits different when you say it by the leading of God's spirit, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. And it feels a lot better. I told some of you earlier that came on the live stream and those that came in a little late, I want to repeat this. We were in Violin, New Jersey on Thursday, Friday, and we left out on Saturday so we can be back here. So we can be back here. It's important for us to be here. Especially during the transitioning that we have now. So that, that the word can be rightly divided. The word of truth. So we, got, we, have, we have things that we have to say to you guys. And we can't take a break from telling you. But what I want to tell you is this is how God opened this service up today. On Friday night, a bunch of us gentlemen, a gentleman was outside in, in the, in the, um, on the sidewalk of, outside of the ministry. And we just start praying. And we prayed for God to take dominion back over the land. To put his word back into the land. Because what I didn't tell you on, on Thursday night, we walked out of the church after the fellowship and I, after enjoying everything. You just walked into a cloud of marijuana smoke whole lot of marijuana smoke. I'm talking about skunky Le Pew was everywhere. It, and it was strong. But even before I got to that, I went outside before everybody else and I was trying to guide Pastor Archie into to the church because he, he got a little misguided by the wrong address. And I, a gentleman walked down and was, he was saying, hey man, is this it? And I said, man, I don't know. <laughs> I'm at the church. And if any of you know what, what, what he was asking about, is this it? Was this the house? I'm like, man, I don't know. So I got back on the phone and, and directed Pastor Archie. said, Pastor, you need to get inside the building. I said, I'm good. I'm good. I ain't worried about nothing that's taking place out here. I'm speaking truth to power. So I went inside and told the pastor, I said, tomorrow, we're going to pray for you this area. We're going to pray for your ministry to be successful. And we're praying that the Spirit of God gets it, get here. So we prayed. 
He's, and but for what he said, the pastor said, he said, that was my prayer that we get some people in here that just would agree with me on that. So we prayed that God's presence would take over and empower the church, empower the ministry. And then, you know, after we finished, we were sitting there talking. God said, now you go knock on that door of that house. I said, God, he said, go. And that's all I said, God. And I, was, I turned and walked away. And they, nobody knew what I was doing. They looking at me like I was crazy. Knock on the door. Gentleman said, who is it? I said, it's the church from next door. <laughs> like that. He said, who? I said, the church from next door. <laughs> He opened the door. I said, how you doing, man? He said, I'm doing good. I said, I just had to come to tell you. I said, there's going to be some changes taking place in this area. He said, huh? <laughs> I said, some changes, Gary, take place in this area. I said, God is taking dominion over this area. He said, I, now, <laughs> how they tell on themselves? Man, I'm just sitting in the house. We don't do drugs in here. <laughs> I said, man, I ain't even mentioned drugs. I just tell you that it's a change coming. I said, if you don't conform to what's taking place in this area, you're going to have to go. He said, okay. <laughs> he shut the door. And it was a gentleman sitting at the, door, at the door. A few minutes later, we was gathered in our car. We seen that guy get up, and he took off out of that house. But see, what I'm saying to you is, take dominion. God has placed it inside of you. Take authority. Because he has it inside of you. I'm not telling you to go out of your way. If God didn't tell you to do it, don't do it. He'll be like, all your clothes all ripped off and you running down the street naked because you didn't go in the power of God. But what I'm telling you is, if you follow the, follow the power of God, God will lead you. God will place the words in you. And a change will come. A change will come. And that's my prayer. That for this ministry, for that, for Refuge of Grace in Violent, Violent, New Jersey, for all the ministries that's attached to One Faith Fellowship, those that's attached to Top of the Mountain Christian Ministry, a change is going to come because we're speaking the word of truth to power. Do you understand what I'm saying? So my prayer is that we continue to grow, that we continue to flourish. And I want you to get this kind of faith. This too shall pass. So whatever you come up against, this too shall pass. So if anybody doesn't know Christ, does anybody doesn't have a relationship with Christ? And you're struggling in your spirit. If you with us live stream, Donnie, can you pick, pull up our thing and see if anybody is in or send us a message? If you don't want nobody to know that you're struggling right now, <clears throat> send us a message on Messenger. We want to touch and agree with you. We want to pray with you that you get this too shall pass, Faith. We want you. If anybody says, and I'm only just talking to those that's live stream. If anybody says in the sanctuary that needs that too, you come down. You make, a, you make it your point. The stump on the devil's head. Don't be afraid who's watching. Because what you're doing is saying, I'm serving notice on you, devil. That I don't care what you're doing. Whatever I did in the dark, I'm out of the dark. I'm in the light right now. And I'm standing firm in God's house. I'm surrendering my life to him. We want you to come. You know, we haven't had altar call in a long time. And I was feeling we needed it. You know, I, and I think back that sometimes that's what the enemy wanted here. Don't touch nobody. Don't lay hands on nobody. You know, I'm not, say, if, if, I'm not saying that you're in fear of all the touching, but if that's you, that's okay. But what I want you to understand is that we're going to touch and agree on your behalf. If you don't have that relationship with Christ, even if you backslid and you, you want, you know, we got people say once save, always save. It's not once save, always save, because the Bible talks about being married to the backslider. That, that he wants you to, all you got to do is tell God that you're sorry. You're not coming to me telling me that you're sorry. You're telling God, whatever takes place at the altar is between, altar 
is between you and God. I'm just an instrument that God uses on the earth. I am as he is, but I'm on the earth. I'm an extension. I'm an ambassador for God. That's willing to do the things that God has ordained me to do for you. Reach back. And we look, we've seen that in scripture in Luke 21 in verse 31, 32, where it says, reach back and bring, strengthen your brother. That's what we want to do at Top of the Mountain Christian Ministry. We want to strengthen you. We want your life to be right. And then finally, if you don't have a church home and you say, Pastor, I believe what's taking place at Top of the Mountain Christian Ministry is, is the place that I need to be. We want you. We not, we're not looking for members, ladies and gentlemen. We not. We're not. We look to expand our family. We're not a member-driven church. We're a family-driven church. Amen. And you don't have to be family according to blood or DNA, but get, guess what? We may not have the same mama. We may not have the same daddy. We might not even have the same relative, but we got the same blood. Amen. Think about that for a moment. Let that sink in, right, DJ? <laughs> Let that one sink in on you. And see, that's how we do it at Top of the Bible Christians. We're not looking for, no, for you to bring no letter. We're not looking for you to say that you come in by Christian experience. All we want you to do is come. And when you come, this is the qualifier. Be faithful. Be true. Support your ministry. If, if we're not looking to take anybody from any other ministry, but if you moved and come to a different place, all I ask you to do is just do it decently in order. Amen. If you leave in one ministry to come to another, just say, talk to the people, let them know, hey, it's time for me to go move on. And that's, that goes for top of the bottom Christian ministry. Anybody leave here? Our ministry is not for everybody. And every some ministries is not for us. And I know that. I'm not, I'm not, that kind of vein to think that we got the only ministry. And that's why you have ministries on every block or ministries here and there because there is a ministry for somebody. The qualifications here is if you want the word of truth, if you want to be challenged, if you don't want to be sugar-coated, if you don't want to be lied to, this is for you. Amen. That's, it. that's the kind of ministry that we have here. But if you want watered down, if you want it sugar-coated, this is not the ministry. So we thank God for you. And you know how to reach us. Reach us on Messenger. We have a church phone number that's on our Facebook page. I don't know it offhand. We, we monitor that, that church cell phone. So if you want to reach out to us, call us. We'd love to pray with you and for you. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and praise you for the word that took place here today. Lord, we ask that you continue to enlighten your children, Lord God. Let them know that you are the God of heaven and that you are the God of power, Lord God, and, and that you're the one that heal us and, and take care of us, Lord God, and, and watch over us, Lord God, and protect us, Lord God. Now, Father God, we pray that the words that you placed in us today is rightly divided by the word of truth and that it will set the captives free and that those that needed to hear it would that receive the power that you emanated from me, Father God. I thank you, I praise you, and I give your name the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. We have Zoom Bible study tomorrow at 7 o'clock. If you want to become part of, part of the Top of the Mountain Christian Ministry family. We're in Blythewood, South Carolina, 302 Pine Grove Road, 290 And as I said, our phone number is on our web page or on our Facebook page. If not, I'll post it um, on this message so you can get it. So you, if you need to talk to Top of the Mountain Christian Ministries, we, we, most of the time we get back with you within an hour. Most times, it's not guaranteed. Uh, the phone number is 803-704-4719. 803 
1-9. Top of the Mountain Christian Ministries. You can call us and we're there for you. We love you on purpose for his purpose. Bye now. Perfect time to join us and fellowship with us at the Top of the Mountain Ministries. God bless you. I love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. Yeah.